Hello friends, this video is about how in spite of my best intentions, I could not control the run out of the Rexes in an intermittent cataract. This particular case was a 45 year old male patient who developed an intermittent cataract probably due to diabetes. The funny thing about this intumescence was that there was no liquefaction of the cortex but the entire cortex was solid and swollen as well as white. Now let's go through how I handled this case. In spite of giving the patient mannitol preoperatively, I forgot to use a cohesive viscoelastic because I did not have it at that time. After staining the anterior capsule, I found that the stain was taken up in a very mottled appearance. When I made the initial puncture, there was no escape of fluid as you can see because this was made of solidified cortical fibers. Now this is the type of intumescent cataracts that's extremely dangerous because when I try to create the mini rexes, just see what happens. There was so much of positive intralenticular pressure that even as I tried to complete the mini rexes, the edge of the rexes ran off to the periphery. Having lost the rexes, I now had to plot another course now to carry the case. You have to decompress all the cortex from within the capsular bag. And for this, you have to use a Simcoe cannula as well as an irrigation cannula. I'm planning a small nick in the capsule through the side port using the intraocular scissors. You know, the best laid plans can go awry. I find the scissors is so blunt it does not cut and I just managed to crush the capsule at that point. So while attempting the capsule rexus from that point again I find that I have not created a break so I create a small opening using the utrato forceps itself and then I am able to control the rexus size to a very desired 5mm. You don't want too large a capsular rexus because you want sufficient amount of anterior capsule to be left behind to put a sulcus blazed intraocular lens if need be. In this case, I was able to round off the rest of the capsular rexus. There was a single runaway point. But what was in my favor was the fact that this cataract is probably soft and chalky, just a 45 year old male. I didn't expect it to be very hard. This nucleus was just about a grade 2 with very chalky contents and I found it a very simple matter to chop this lens from the mid peripheral point which is my technique of performing the direct phaco chop. The reason why you can choose a direct chop is that the vacuum will impale and lollipop the nucleus and slightly lift it off from the posterior capsule which means that there are no positive forces that you are going to transmit to the posterior capsule and therefore it is quite safe. And you see that in spite of having a rexus runoff, I am breaking the nucleus within the capsular bag and mobilizing only one piece at a time because it simply will not do to get the entire lens out of the capsular bag and do the mussification anterior chamber because you will have a cornea that looks as white as the cataract in the post-operative period. What I learned about the intumescent cataracts are there are two major types of them. One with liquefied cortex which if you took sufficient precaution you can get away with doing a double dex or any technique. But the real stinkers are those which have solidified swollen cortex and these are absolutely very very difficult to get a controlled capsular rexus. Also when exiting the eye do not forget to perform a viscofluid exchange. Thank you. 
this is the lucidus heat off lens that's being implanted in the patient. This is the loading procedure for the same. I certainly do not have any financial interest in the product. I do not have a great experience with the lucidus IOL. I've just implanted a few of them, but they seem to be doing very good with respect to distance and intermediate range of vision. The logic in this patient for putting in a lucidus lens is because the other eye is extremely clear and you would need reading glasses for the other eye and there will be a good symmetry and match in visual quality and performance between the two eyes with the implantation of an eat off lens. The lens is injected carefully inside the capsular bag and with gentle prodding I am able to get even the trailing close loop into the capsular bag. You can see that the entire lens is beautifully sitting in the capsular bag because there's a single point of rexus runoff. In the future, there could be some amount of capsular fibrosis that can occur and there may be a mild decentration of the lens. However, the eat off lenses, especially the ones like the Lucidus, which utilizes the concept of induced spherical aberrations in order to induce the depth of focus, will tolerate mild decentration as well. The case is concluded and the day is saved. Thank you very much for your attention.